It's starting to get pretty cold out. We got to figure out what to do for uh, water here for the winter. We have our 325 gallon tank up in the loft here. It's all supported with our beams we milled. And I started running this PEX uh, and I am bringing it down to a hole I put here with some fittings. So on the inside here, I have an elbow right away that goes to an adapter uh, to the PEX and that will bolt to the wall here so it's nice and sturdy outside. And now I'm going to be crimping on our three quarter inch PEX here that runs up to the loft with the water so that I can get this bolted in and then insulated around it. I have enough room here. Really put that way up high. It slid up on me. I didn't realize. Oh, great. There we go. Right. Try that again. Make sure it doesn't slide on me. Screw this in while I hold it outside. I have a hole in the bottom already, but I can't get it held in place from in here very well. How's that? Uh, that's probably the closest we're gonna get. I don't know how the drill's supposed to get in there though, but. Well, I can't reach any further than that. You need a longer bit. Did you do the back one or the bottom one? The back one. I said do the bottom. I didn't. Oh. Well, I did the back one. All right, now that that's screwed in place, I'll have to get it mounted in there better. We'll go take a look outside to see how we have this going. Everything's kind of in the way right now. But uh, what we have here is the extension going through the wall, goes into a ball valve. And then I have an adapter from the standard thread to a hose thread. And that's where I uh, cut the first hole and realized I have the mounts for the pipe on the wrong side. So I cut a new hole and put it over here. So what this will allow us to do is I can hook up a standard hose to this and it will go to a, um, a pump that we have and the pump sits in the bottom of the extra water tank that we have, which is currently sitting underneath that tarp over there. Now I'm gonna run up top and plumb in the tank up top here. So the plan here is to take this three quarter inch pipe that's coming in, we're going to have it come out on two separate uh, pieces with this T. So first it's going to go into the three quarter inch T. We're going to have one come straight out as three quarter inch to this ball valve. And then I'm going to put this half inch um, elbow in off this half inch T to turn it and have it come out and go into a half inch valve. So I'll have two shutoffs up here immediately off of this three quarter inch.
Am I doing this right? <laughs> Okay, so if we have this, I want it to be able to get to the tank here, but I want to have a drain and be able to plug it so it can drain for the winter and not freeze in my pipe. So, we have that come straight in that way. Really, we just want it the other way. in here. Wish they had a better option so they didn't have to open my handle so far. to the front of this water tank and get this side figured out too. Now I was thinking that I'd put an elbow over here, but I might just let this curve around like this just fine and then just put an elbow here. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. sorry my pipe threading and then my PVC glue and then we'll have to find the half inch pecs for over there Thank you. 
So my cleaner was laying on its side, and it seems a lot of it is gone, but it should be hopefully enough to uh, get this working. This stuff's pretty powerful stuff. It uh, just eats away everything on here. And this PVC glue, it, uh, while it's wet here, it basically melts this PVC. And then as it dries, the PVC hardens back up and creates a really good seal on here. So this will not come apart once I get this on here. go. I'll let that dry and getting pretty close to being able to get some water in here. So we'll just we'll cut this straight over here. Learned my lesson from last time. Of trying to get into that tiny little corner and not get a very good crimp, I'll just keep it long and I'll shove it back through the hole. Get a section that's about the same length as that one. Perfect. This way.
Well, it's not real pretty, but it'll do my job. So now what we have going on is down below, I've got the adapter from a regular hose spigot to a ball valve. And then the ball valve goes to a little extension that gets through the wall. And then that goes into an elbow, which turns it to the stud. And then I've got a adapter that goes from the standard threading to PEX, three quarter inch. And that is screwed to the stud to keep the outside ball valve from moving when I use it. And then the PEX runs up here, three quarter inch up to this bell valve and then comes to a T. The T then goes at three quarter inch into the tank and then also the other way then goes half inch to a ball valve so I can shut this off and then this half inch will go down and eventually through the cabin all the way to where the sink is going to end up being. In the meantime it's probably just going to be a hose hanging here until we get the chance to do that. So what this does for me is when we go and fill another one of these tanks in the truck and we bring it here, I can hook up my pump, drop it into the tank, have a standard garden hose come from the pump and hook up to the spigot outside. And then I'll make sure both that valve and this valve are open. And then I'll turn the pump on and that will pump up to our tank and fill our water tank. And then once we are done filling the water tank, I can just, in the summer months, I can just shut off the ball valve that's down there and that will keep it from draining back out. And then in the winter months, what I'll do is I'll leave that one open and I'll come up here and close this one just so our uh, pipe doesn't freeze and uh, cause a leak or anything there. So I'll close it here for the winter being we're getting cold now. And then every time we go to fill, I'll just have to come and open this. And then from our tank, the three quarter inch coming out and goes through this to this ball valve, this will go and feed everything else. And I'll be able to shut off the main water then for everything we have inside if need be. And then eventually I will be adding in a pump in this section. So I'll cut this open, get an adapter that goes to the threaded pieces for the pump, and then I'll put the pump right in here. And that'll go just off our solar system. So this will then give us pressure. It should have a pressure shutoff then, and every time we need any pressure to the sink, it will give us the pressure we need or for the shower for that matter. Um, but in the meantime, it's just gonna be gravity fed. It'll be slow, but it'll be fine. There was also a lot of debate on where we were gonna put this tank up here. We weren't sure if we should have it just perfectly center or if we have it pushed all the way to one side or the other, pushed all the way back, pushed all the way forward, how it should be oriented. Um, and we ended up sticking it all the way to this side so that we have room to get around it and we have it oriented this way so that we can get into the top here for cleaning because we'll have to do that probably annually or maybe maybe twice a year and then i also wanted to be able to access this if need be i wasn't sure if i was going to put a valve here or anything at the time um i can always add one in if i need but I wanted to be able to access that. So we have room behind it then to access that. I have room to get around it. I have room to be able to clean this. And then I have room to be able to go over here and get to the valves for pumping our water. Also something I had found online suggested adding a copper pipe to your tank. So I added that copper pipe, cleaned it and threw it in there. That should keep algae from growing, especially being we're getting sunlight on it right now. We'll probably have to put a curtain up to keep the sun off of this. Because um, otherwise we'll, we will eventually have things grow in here otherwise. Maybe we'll 
get something to cover over top of this whole thing just to keep it dark. I haven't decided on that yet. And I am excited to be able to have water in here now. Once that uh, PVC glue dries over there, I should be able to get a load of water in the truck and pump it up in here. I suppose also a note on why I'm going through all this hassle of having water storage up here and having it all set up so I can haul it in and pump it is because we still don't have a well at this point. Um, it is expected to still happen this year, but we really don't know. Um, we initially bought the tractor so that we could um, widen our driveway a little bit because the well guy wants to get his big rig in here because the little one broke and he's not able to pull the whole casing up with that little one. So he wants to get the big rig in here to be able to do that. Um, but being the tractor died when we bought that, I haven't had a chance to get that fixed yet and widen the driveway. Uh, he came and picked up his truck actually yesterday and he just left the casing in the ground for now. And I really just need to poke around at that tractor and get it working so that I can widen the end of the driveway specifically. And then he should be able to get in here before the snow comes and drill so well. But we, I don't know, it depends on if I get time to work on that tractor. We still have a lot of things we need to do. I didn't have a lot of insulation to do in the house yet. And I have to get a lot of firewood yet. We probably only have about three cords and we're expecting to use about seven. So I'm aiming to have at least 10. Um, we did have a friend come and drop off two cords of wood for us. That was all split seasoned birch, which was super nice. It was actually uh, Mitchell's in Alaska. He's got a YouTube channel. I met him a while back and he offered to bring us some wood. So that was super nice of him. Today's task looks like it might be getting our battery bank system set up and we'll just charge it with the generator for now and solar panels will probably wait until next summer but also we're making some breakfast at the same time which it's time for me to rotate these around because they've been in there for about half the time <laughs> so, it around mm -hmm. Ooh, those look so yeah, good. I can't grab that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right. We've got to find our hot gloves. It's also easier when you we have a tray to put underneath it, but I was not going to try to find that or have you find it. <laughs> so floppy. There we go. About 15 more minutes, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm, probably. And our current mess. Don't have too much room to work here, but uh, I believe we decided we're going to put the solar inverter and batteries up in the loft here by the water uh, so they're out of the way and not taking up space that we're going to be using. I shouldn't really have to look at them or touch them ever once they're installed so I think this is the best place for them to save us some space. Um, but right now we don't have anywhere that this uh, will mount to so I'm going to screw this up here for now. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but figuring it out as we go here. Looking at the directions and following the best I can. From what I understand, these two leads that I just hooked up 
we'll go to the batteries, which are going to set up here. This is a, uh, basically, a, this is a breaker. Um, and then this wire here, I just have running down the side of the wall outside, and this will go down to the generator. So this is going to go in my AC in, and that's what I'm going to get hooked up right now. Everything I've ever dealt with was typically color coded. This doesn't have any color codes, but I'm assuming that this is ground, neutral, and live. So I think that's how I'm going to wire it. Then I'll check the directions before I hook the generator up or anything. All right, so this will go down to the generator then. I need to add another wire here, which will go to like the outlets and lights and whatnot. So in the meantime, I think I'm just going to run a wire down to the bottom and just have a single outlet um, that will run off of until I get the house wired. Um, and then these go to the batteries, and then this connection here would be for the solar panels. Um, but those probably are not going to get hooked up anytime soon because I don't have anywhere to mount them right now. So right now it's just going to be a generator charging up the system whenever we happen to use the generator for anything probably. So this is our setup for electricity now. I got the inverter set up here and the two batteries hooked up. Yeah, everything I have here is all hooked up. It runs outside down in the corner there. And I just have a single cable coming around the back to a single outlet off the edge there uh, that we can use in the meantime. And then I have a cable running out there that we can hook the generator up to. We don't have the panels hooked up yet. They are just uh, laying on the ground outside yet and we don't have a place to mount them. So we'll probably stand them up and set them somewhere for the winter months until we at least get somewhere to mount them up. The plan is to get them mounted up on the woodshed once we build that. Uh, we, right now just our wood is tarped. I've got other things to prioritize until before the winter months here, but uh, eventually we will build a woodshed just off to the left of our house here. And um, the roof slant is going to be hopefully at the angle we need these panels at. I have to do some research to see what that is, but it'll be facing south with the roof slant so we can just put the panels right on top of the woodshed. But at least we have some electricity now. I don't have to run the generator every single time we need any sort of power. So that's super nice. I wasn't sure if we showed the latest feature of our house yet, but Cody got some pretty cool lights put up underneath our loft. And I think these ones are really cool because... They have a nightlight feature. Now, the nightlight feature is going to be a lot dimmer once we actually get um, like our ceiling coverage put up there because then it won't be reflecting off of quite as much. It'll just be like a thin border around the circle. Um, but yeah, I think that looks really cool. So I can kind of see with this one. It's just going to be like a... Yeah, maybe you can't tell. The nightlight will just be a super thin, it'll look more like this side than it will up there, so it'll be a lot more dim. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice having actual lights in here.
think I found, oh, well, Cody did, the ugliest <laughs> tree ever. There are so many burls on it. It's not that ugly. But it is, it's like a triangle down here. It kind of looks like three or more at the bottom. It looks like there's so many just little trees all just fused together. Yeah, that might be what happened. I don't know. Cody said it looks like a rock wall, so he's going to try to climb it and not fall and hurt himself. Oh, not fall and hurt myself. I don't approve of this. <laughs> oh, I don't approve of this either. I could definitely climb up there, though. If I wasn't afraid of falling. Well, yeah, let's also not hurt ourselves. You've got a lot of work to do still. Yeah, yeah. It is like a rock wall, though. You can climb right up that. It is very uh, bubbly looking. Yeah, it is pretty ugly. Also, this tree right there, I kind of just want to hang a swing on it. A little short, ain't it? Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're going over there. Those hips. I want to do something with these eventually, but it's not this year. I kind of doubt it'll spring back once that spruce is cut. There is a the, this downed one right here? Yeah. Hey, go to Cody. Larry. Hi. Come here. Go. Come here. <laughs> Come on. You can do it. You love climbing the trees. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it'll spring back up. I know it is alive though. It had leaves on it down there earlier this year. Okay. Yeah, you get that grass. You crazy. Yeah. Got a lot more wood to cut though. That one's hung up. That one's really hung up. That one's yeah. really awful to get out of there. One of these days we'll have all of these trees that are hung up gone, hopefully. That but there's... Really well, that's that's two of them in the same Y of that one tree. Uh, that one just looks bad. Yeah. There's another hung up one. There's a lot. There's, there's so many there. hung up trees there's in this. There.
all those trips with the side by side came out to uh, about this much here. The real skinny pieces I threw over in a different pile to get cut up right away. Um, but we're expecting that before it gets too terribly cold and snow sets in, I want to be able to have this full from there all the way across to there up to the window and then two stacks deep. And we're hoping that in addition to the pile of wood that we've been cutting ourselves and then also that uh, birch pile there from uh, Mitchell's in Alaska, hopefully that will be enough to get us through the winter and I shouldn't have to cut any throughout the winter with all the snow. Um, all these pieces are cut to about I don't know three feet or something and all of them I pre-cut about halfway through where I need these cut I just found that it was a lot easier to cut it all the way through at every fourth piece or fourth cut it was just a lot easier for me to move them out of the woods and not so much bending over and picking up piece by piece throwing it in and then unloading piece by piece just Long chunks made it a lot easier, a lot quicker. And they're gonna stay like this until I can no longer get in the woods to get firewood. And then I'll work on cutting these to length and splitting what needs split. This here is the, also came from those loads we just did. Um, it's all smaller pieces or it's either small stuff or it's just weird shaped or it's stuff that's not real dry and kind of wet so we probably won't end up burning this year it still needs cut up and stored somewhere but it's all the weird stuff that isn't sitting with all the spruce we have at the end of the house also any end cutoffs that just came out to a weird size end up coming over here so that we have some stuff to burn in the meantime
I'm going to do for tonight. Um, it's going to rain next couple of days, so I have to get the this wood tarped and a few other stacks of wood tarped yet. Um, also give my wrist a, uh, a good rest. All this hauling of wood and splitting and carrying the chainsaw is really doing a number on it. As I said before, the, the goal is to get up to the window height all the way across here, which I'm pretty close to, and then get a second layer deep. So almost halfway of the goal before we get too much snow or I can't get in the woods very well. This is all just uh, dead standing spruce that I've been cutting. Uh, anything I try and pick up off the ground, it's just kind of it's waterlogged. If I if I let it sit, it would dry for sure. But uh, yeah, I just I don't have the time for that. So everything here is dead standing. And just looking out around the property here, there's so still so many dead standing spruce that I'm not gonna have any problem finding anything to cut. Doesn't even look like I've made a dent here around the house. And then if I ever did, I still have. 20 acres that direction that hasn't been touched so a lot of wood around it's just spruce so I want to have I want to have more than I expect to need for firewood being it's mostly all spruce um, I know the birch will last me a lot longer but all the birch around here is live or was cut down this year so it hasn't had time to be seasoned and uh so it's just not very good to run through the stove. So this year is all, all spruce. I think we were expecting to use about seven cords. Uh, and that would be including using birch. So I want to get at least ten for this winter. Um, it's not the end of the world if we don't got a, enough wood. Because I can always go into the woods with the snow machine and get more wood if need be. It's just, it'll be more work doing it in the deep snow. I do really love this time of year. Nice cool weather, just having a light jacket on. There's ice on top of all the puddles. During the day it's getting to like the mid 30s to sometimes hit 40. Um, it should be a little warmer next week here. But at night we're getting into the mid-twenties. So everything's pretty cold, but I like seeing all the leaves on the ground and being able to see into the woods farther with all the brush dying off for the winter. Nice cool weather. Very quiet. 